Darren, you wake to find yourself in a dark room. It's quite light in here, actually. <laughs> Steve here, not John Robertson. He's on the other bit. Anywho, have you liked, subscribed and done all the things? If you don't, I'll send John round your house. and You ain't going to want that. Trust me. Wired. Unplugged. Hello everybody and welcome to Wired Unplugged episode 19. And I'm back with the main man, Anne Cooper. And Plug's back in, Jake. I'm alive. Plug's back in. <laughs> He's plugged in. Yeah. Oh man, it's good to have you back, mate. Yeah. I'm, I'm It's glad good to be here. Yeah. Oh, you're better. I'm 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 on the mend. I'm on the mend. Um I lost some weight in my face uh because mm -hmm. i was quite unwell but uh... is that a benefit <laughs> i was gonna say good for you but no also, it's like it, not. It, it, it's, it's one of those things because i've started a i started a fitness thing anyway yeah um and it, it it's like oh that's great but also it's not the best <laughs> it's yeah. not a good way to lose weight yeah the process of it was uh horrendous yeah. uh, and i never want to go through that again yeah um but uh i'm 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 just gonna say that hey that happened i'm going to use it now uh yeah. to, to spur start me the momentum yeah you got the momentum yeah, right yeah, on yeah. man well well listen i want to start by being a british stereotype how's the weather over there mate because here, hot, man. In, here in, yeah <laughs> man here in north wales oh yeah we're, we're, we're sweltering um so look guys Girls, everybody um, who wants to let us know the weather forecast, you can do that uh, by emailing us at unpluggedwireproductions.com. Um, we don't just take the sort of Celsius and Fahrenheit metrics. We also take, you know, you can make your own if you want. Make your own, like... Sweltering. Sweltering. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Listen, you mean, like, on a scale of one to Steve wearing shorts in the last episode, like... How boiling did, hot is it? You know. What I mean? did, did you see? Did you see over the over the weekend? I think it was he he broke out his Borat mankini. I certainly did. Yeah, <laughs> work from home. The perils of slash privileges of. So it, yeah. Uh, I'd love to be his next door neighbor. Seriously, I, just peeking over the hedge. The guy's a menace. So yeah, for those who have uh, not been catching up, like we did an episode last week, an Aaronless episode, it had Gary and Steve joining us to talk about. Um, E3, uh, which wasn't E3, so we can't really call it that. But hey, you know, and in a way, Aaron, I wish he was on there too because there's so. I'm good. I missed it. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, gutted. it was a good one. But listen, we we're not talking about that anymore. We're talking strictly about what we we got coming up. We're talk, you know, much like you and your illness, we're taking it, we're running the momentum, and we're moving forward. So, <laughs> uh, coming up this week, we have the Master of Darkness and. Uh, literal dark room expert john robertson who i like how do you describe him malevolent dude, presence dude seriously like again I, I know i said that i'm sad that i missed last week's yeah. episode but i'm sad that i missed that interview as well because john john is a presence exactly. <laughs> john is a force he is and yeah you know i i i, I was in I was intrigued to see how it was going to go for you because like you know, John is a man that can go on stage at a comedy gig, yeah. And right at the start, if someone heckles him, he'll throw a set list out and focus on that person for the full hour, yeah. And without any, you know, stops or anything, he's just, I've got you. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> we're, we're not giving too many spoilers away. I think we fell in love. To be honest, it went really well. It's hard like, not to. Yeah, no, it, it went really well. He didn't call me a single expletive, so I feel like I was doing really well. He was on his he's on his best behavior actually, and uh, yeah, st stick around for that in a bit. So John Robinson talks to us about the dark room. If you've got no idea what what that's about, literally neither do we, and we've been watching it for years. Uh, he'll tell you a bit more about that and the book that he's writing and why Americans want you to tone down cannibalism. We got all these revelations <laughs> still to come, but for now, <laughs> that sounds like a John conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You know, in your in your absence, we had substitute minister of propaganda Steve uh, last week wearing a bowler hat. Uh, oh, and, what? And uh, he, he he spoke a big game about me? sending you a copy, but uh, a copy. <laughs> a copy. Tell of like what you can tell I work in games, can't you? <laughs> the original, the original can you hat. Send me a, a hat skew, please. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. What's the redemption key again? So look, yeah. you're you're back, and and the king doesn't need to say he's the king, and the minister of propaganda doesn't need to say he's the minister of propaganda. Hat or no hat, I'm glad you're back. Let's run the rhythm and get into the wire propaganda segment. 
Propaganda. Well, it's this time again. Wired uh, never is, stops. Uh, Wired never sleeps. What have we got going on? I, can do. I don't have a hat, so I'm just... That's it. Uh, for anyone who's watching this rather than uh, listening, other hot drinks are available. And for those uh, <laughs> listening, uh, Aaron was wearing a nondescript <clears throat> cup on his head for just a few moments. All right. I, I appreciate the audio description. It's great. Um, okay, so uh, the first thing to kick off is... We all love a video game announcement. Jake, mm-hmm. I know you are mm-hmm. you love a good cheeky little announcement. Yep. What we love even more is an announcement of an announcement, right? Yeah. And yes, this is a piss take of announcements of announcements. So we made an announcement of an announcement for <laughs> Okay Paradise. Yeah. And essentially, I can't spoil the announcement, but I can spoil the announcement of the announcement. And that is that uh, the release date for RK Paradise, if you're still following, will be announced on July 29th next week. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone is encouraged in that mind field of madness yeah. of whatever I just said, just to stay tuned to the uh, the wired social channels at wired p. It's cool. like an it's like an ARG, an alternate yeah. reality game, an alternate release date game in this case. Yeah. Um. So yeah, if you want to find out, and um, it's it's screwed Aaron's mind up so much that he did accidentally say July 29th when it's June 29th. But this is what happens when there's so many dates being flung about. Okay, so June, so June, so, yeah, 29th next week. So if you want to get locked, if you want to lose your mind as well, you can by following Wired P and you can understand. It's still June, Jake. It's still June. <laughs> Just about. All right, don't worry about it. Just about. Um, what else? No, but I, I think I, I think we're, we're going to have a, a release date to share, um, and then everyone can get excited to uh, know and can get their hands on it because that's what a release date announcement is. Yeah. Um, but I think it, you've probably seen a lot of um, cool press and some yeah. content creator stuff over over the last couple of months with RK Paradise, and um, you know, definitely get excited for it. You can essentially you run. Your um, you take over your dad's laundromat business, who is who's played by Doug Cockle, mm-hmm. uh, Geralt of Rivia, previous Brand guest of the show. show. Yeah, yeah. Um, whose name is Gerald, who is in the Riviera. Gerald of Riviera, strong. Um, and essentially, you take over the laundromat. He wants you to run it, try and true. You know, wash clothes, take out the trash, that sort of mumbo jumbo. But you're like, no, not today, Dad of Riviera. Yeah. I <laughs> am making an arcade because I don't like washing clothes. But I do like playing games. And then you can live out your arcade fantasies by building the ultimate arcade paradise. So look forward to it. Very good. Thank you very much for that. So yeah, stay tuned. I, I think I'm still a bit delirious from my illness, to be honest. Uh, with you. Pete, <laughs> you can look as far as you're concerned, mate, do what you want. All right, ne- next, Ooh. what have we got coming on? Um, so good news. Uh, if you listen to this now, Deliver Us the Moon is out now on next gen consoles. Mm. And listen, uh, first of all, congratulations coken team who were uh with us just a few so second of all this is kind of explains again not trying to justify it too much but aaron has to say it's out now when we me and aaron know it's not out now we're recording this it's hard to say i'm like it... every time yeah exactly so by the time you dear listener slash viewer watching this then deliver us the moon will be out on next gen consoles and uh if you want to know Straight from the horse's mouth, the, the the detail that they've gone to, to sort of tinker under the hood and fine tune this, yeah, so they can get the ray tracing and things like that, all in check. You can um, you can check a couple of episodes ago where, where they hear it. Uh, you know, they they, they speak yeah. everything about it. Mm. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And I think um, you know, if if you have just got off the back of uh, E three, not E three, you would have seen um, you know, in the future game show and things, uh, deliver us Mars. Uh, which is which is the sequel, yeah, uh, to Deliver Us the Moon, but it's being published by our friends at uh, Frontier. Yeah. Um, and I think if you want to, and and it's it is it's a step change in terms of gameplay as well. Um, but if you want to know how this series began, definitely check out Deliver Us the Moon, and it'll give you your first good steps for mankind. Yeah, very, 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 very good. That was a temple tapper there. It took me a while and I was like, mm, very good. All right. So two down, one to go. This one involves uh, the word crushed in all caps. So I Yes. Mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So unfortunately, I have to report that Lumo is getting crushed. <laughs> the bioluminescent blob is being flattened and squished. But don't panic. 
nothing can kill Lumo. Yeah. Um, it is a <laughs> Lumo is being squished into vinyl. The vinyl is now starting to be pressed, um, and you can look more uh, on on. Honestly, uh, when... something and this is going to sound so sick and twisted, but the idea of watching a little Lumo blob get squashed into a vinyl is like oddly <laughs> satisfying. Can you remember like when Steve was showing the um, the Falconeer vinyl pressing? It's something yeah. satisfying about it, isn't it? I don't yeah, know yeah, if it's yeah. like a textural thing, but you can imagine the Lumo little, the blobby little texture turn into a vinyl, can't you? Yeah. yeah that's really you can, uh, Hopefully, I, I would assume Steve is probably going to do the same uh, for the for the Lumo vinyl. I, I think there is, you said you, you hit the nail on the head. There is, you squash the Lumo on the head. There is yeah. something very satisfying about watching that process happen. I've... I've have you ever fallen down that YouTube <laughs> uh, rabbit hole of those videos where it's just like, oh, watch this brick be crushed by a pneumatic drill. And yeah. now watch what? this metal yeah, will it, bar. Will it's it like... blend type stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. so good. So yeah, good. exactly. So, so it's like that, but more less destructive, more creative, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So I can imagine if we did squish a Lumo into like an impossibly flat pancake shape, <laughs> that it would have a sort of musical undertone. So yeah, again, it'd be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So the so the presses are happening. The vi the, the vinyl is is in the works. The, if there are any kids yeah. listening, yeah, <laughs> Lumo is safe. Lumo yeah. is safe. no Lumos <laughs> were harmed in the making of these vinyls. Let's just put that out there. So yeah. yeah, I mean, and if there are any kids, oh please. All right. Well, listen. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're going to, get, to click off this. Listen. Thank you very much, Aaron. It's good to have the, the real king of the propaganda mission, the crusade on, on our case. We're gonna we're gonna speak to John Robinson in just a few minutes, but before that, we've got a, a, a smattering of uh, internet news that Aaron has collated from various sources across the internet, which we now bring in with a jingle. from Google. It's a very formal introduction to that segment, then. I feel like it was a thousand gun salute kind of thing, yeah. which we which we now kickstart with the jingle. Um, <laughs> so, You've picked this up so much now. Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. So look, honestly, J John Robinson, I'm doing all the voices and that as well in my head. So look forward to that in just a, in just a few. Um, but OK, what have we got? And what have you brought to the table this week from across the Internet? Jake, what the frig is going on with Nintendo? What the frick is going on? <laughs> not in general. Not in general. <laughs> Listen, well, well, it's not not E three time. It's usually the time that I get excited because I love Nintendo, and they are my tiny. A, a good Nintendo E three direct is is my solace. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's it's yeah. it gives me it gives me life. It gives me purpose to continue on, yeah. uh, just existing. Well, um, <laughs> well, yeah, and 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 yet. Well, uh, you know, actually, but so this is how fast Nintendo work, uh, people. Uh, since Aaron wrote this, Nintendo gone done did a direct, but with a caveat of it was entirely focused around Xenoblade Chronicles Three. So Which, it, at um, that point, I, is it just a video? I, I think it's um because they've done title focused ones in the past, like on Splatoon and things like that. I think it is. Hey, this game is out next month, so here is a twenty-minute deep dive rundown of everything you need to know about the game because it's a massive, you know, yeah. massive time sink of an RPG. Um, and you know, every Xenoblade game it kind of reiterates and refreshes its uh, combat and things like that. Mm, yeah. um, so I think this is just their way to say, let's just give you a picture of what this game actually is, and now you can go forward, get excited with enough information to say, hey, I want to buy this. Yeah. And still, yet that's we're not counting that as a direct, are we? That's no. not what that's not what you mean no. when you say I, like, direct. Don't yeah. get me wrong, I'm excited. Straight after straight after we've finished recording this, I'm gonna go watch it. I'm gonna go watch it. Mm -hmm. Um, because I am excited for it. But do we think there is still hope that before the month <laughs> is out yeah. there will be uh, a oh, Nintendo uh, Direct? The month, maybe not. July? I hope so. It's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? But yeah, Nintendo really just dance to their own tune and they always yeah. will but look like the streets need it it's what what the people demand we've found a lot of this lately with nintendo they've been a lot you know in fact, like, basically they've given us a lot and yet people are still hungry and i'll tell you what i mean like they did the, they did the indie direct 
Should we have been grateful? Yes. Were we? Yeah, a bit. Uh, and then there was the Pokemon Direct. Cool. Yes. Yeah, everyone likes it. Then there's a 20 minute Xenoblade <clears throat> Direct. Cool. But come on, give us the little highlight reel. <laughs> you know, give us the little. Yeah, yeah, we're making yeah. a Donkey Kong and Pikmin and Metroid and Zelda, you know. Ah, so here's, here's the thing. Much, right? I? It, 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 I, obviously, who wouldn't love that? But it, Nintendo do have a. Um, their tactic does seem to be. Let's talk about things in six months, six month chunks. And I don't know if that is because they got bit in the past where they're like, hey, mm. uh, here's a logo at Jeff Keeley's show for Metroid Prime 4. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, you know, fast yeah. forward a year and it's like, sorry, we are canceling this game and uh, yeah. development is restarting from scratch. Uh, so <laughs> I don't yeah, know. And yeah. Bayonetta 3 as well. They're yep. like, yeah, Bayonetta 3. And then, you know, three years later or however long it's been, it's like, okay. Um, so I, I think it makes a lot of sense that they are trying to keep things within, okay, here's what you can expect in the next six months. Because if they dish everything out right now, mm. you know, hey, here's a new Donkey Kong, here's a new F-Zero, blah, 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 blah. By the time you get to September, where you probably want a bit of a, a refresh, you know, a bit more Nintendo Direct love. Yeah. What yeah. can they say rather than saying this is a bit more information on this game, this is a bit more information on that game. So I, I, I... I think I am under the impression that we will get a Nintendo Direct either next week. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm going to say next week. Well, yeah, and I wonder how far ahead because like, we kind of know what's on the roster for the next six yeah. months. So, like, yeah, it have to be beyond. But you know, we'll talk about it a little bit later, hopefully. But one thing I liked about Microsoft's E3 stuff was that it was like everything that you see here, and we mean everything will be available in the next 12 months. And I think that's kind of the way things kind of need to go. And it's what, again, Nintendo were doing it before everyone else by, by yeah. saying, here's the next six months for us, you know? So, so yeah, mm. like, uh, we'll hold out hope. And listen, of course, if it happens, we will discuss it right here. So, uh, yeah. Uh, well, Nintendo adjacent news, I suppose, in our next. And E3 adjacent news, I guess. Mm. Um, so, um, PlayStation, Nintendo, Activision, Blizzard, and Take Two uh, have announced that you know a few of the companies that have announced that they are not going to be attending Gamescom this year, um, which for me is a big sad face. Yeah, well, same. that's not a sad face. That was a duck face. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, but you know, I mean, what what do you think this means for Gamescom? But also, I, I guess a, a wider state of play on. You know, is this due to people potentially having not so much content or time to develop, you know, demos for a show floor? Um, or do you think it's a, a lack of belief in, you know, Gamescom attendance and things like that? I mean, wh mm. where's your head at? It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because I can kind yeah. of see both things that you mentioned there, like <clears throat> PlayStation specifically, like what have they got on the way? Uh, yeah. Hard pressed to find. PlayStation VR 2, God of War. Um, <laughs> you know, and then they've got like stuff that we know is going to be ages away. Like there's yeah. like a Wolverine game and stuff like that. So it's like, what are they going to oh, have yeah. that's like playable, like hands on playable for consumers to get excited about at Gamescom that's out this Christmas? Like, I, I'm a big PlayStation head and I, I couldn't really tell you, mate, to be honest. So I can yeah. see that Blizzard have just, you know, well, they got their own things going on, but they 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 just launched that big mobile game, Diablo Immortal or whatever. So yep. again, again, like w what are they up to? Well, they've kind of got Overwatch two, but that's mm -hmm. going to be free to play and out like the week after games come. So I, in a way, oh, I was so soon. I, I was expecting, yeah, yeah. I was expect, wow. I was expecting um, uh, thingy. I was expecting at least that. Like, hang on, I'll, I'll just make sure that I've got that right. They've got a beta a, a, a playable beta of the of the multiplayer um available uh and it's gonna be june 28th so very very soon so overwatch okay. 2 is so by the time you listen to this it's just a few days away uh and yeah there's gonna be a beta for for that and i think the the, the full game launches uh like yeah just a few months later because the, the beat is on for a month wow. the 28th of june to the 18th of july anyone that wants to to know about that and uh yeah i was kind of thinking something like that would be there you know from them so yeah so... It's, it's it's a big it's a big ip and i don't know if this is just me 
if I've just been out of the loop for a while, but regarding Overwatch 2, and sorry, I know this isn't the Overwatch 2 section, mm. do, yeah. you, do you feel and see the hype still there? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> I don't know. Really. I, I, re- re- I really, uh, I've really level headed on this, like not really on the Overwatch train. I, I had a lot of friends that were, but I was not really uh, in it myself. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm not bitter about it. Like some people are like, you know, they uh, they don't like Apex because they play Fortnite or blah, blah, blah. So I've got no horse in the race, but I think Overwatch yeah. and, and it's, yeah. Um, yeah. Because I, I, usually, I, you know, I remember right. The Overwatch cam, the original Overwatch yeah. campaign for pretty much the entirety of its of its yeah. life, and it's still going now. But yeah. you know, it was I, I would go on Twitter and just see nothing but Overwatch, 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 Overwatch. Um, yeah, and I, I feel like I, I'm personally not seeing a lot of I, I'm because it, it, you know it looks good, it looks it, it looks good, and it's like hey, who's who's more Overwatch? Who's a few new tweaks and changes? Yada yada. Mm. Um, so I'm I'm just like, well, that's a that's a bit confusing. And then to not, you know, t- stake your claim at Gamescom, even, you know, that is one of those games that you, you know when you go to a game convention on the show floor, there is always that one massive booth of a game that came that's already out, yeah, or it's just about to come out, yeah. I would have thought Overwatch that would be that game unless they're doing like a hardware yeah. partnership or something. I don't know. Yeah, honestly, I know what you mean. Like. uh like last convention I went to in the UK was EGX, which was very, very small this year, but they had like Fall Guys. That was that game. But I know what, yeah. I know what you mean. Like the entirety of its run, uh, people were still talking about the new heroes. Like it really had everybody eating out of the palm of their hand, you yeah. know? So with this, I find it so strange that it's almost the complete opposite. So look, like, I mean, I've seen the criticism online, and like I say, I got no, I have no personal thoughts on it. But from what I understand, mm. people are saying it's so too similar. Like it's one point five to the point it could have just been an expansion, and certainly in terms of the PvP. So yeah, uh, interested, but 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 yeah. So I guess we won't find out at Gamescom, and and, and I wonder Ooh. if um, I wonder if it's simply for these big companies who are very liable to all sorts of lawsuits and potential uh you know issues like that if it's a bit too early given the 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 pandemic climate and stuff like that uh they don't want to you know risk it they didn't trial pax east you know we were there we saw what it was like some people um some people uh went some didn't and i don't think it's it I, i think it's a mix of that but i don't think that many of these have got games to show couldn't tell you what take two is showing no that that is uh that is a bit of a funny one obviously they've just launched the quarry um you know nba wwe that is what it is it's, it's well not, no i thought that i always yet. make the same thing that's that's flipping 2k isn't it take 2k two, take two yeah, rockstar yeah but 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 yeah yeah, yeah exactly so, so i was thinking bigger like 2k fine take two rockstar well parent the table tennis two man so so, 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 so even then, so even if we take two K out of the picture, what? Like, so yeah, you, you, you're right. And I guess if take two were going to do anything, it would have to be two K, wouldn't it? Because Rockstar just don't make games; they make one every like millennium, and it's always yeah. the big one. But like, they don't they don't do this, yeah. you know. Um, it's very it's it's very weird for me as well because like especially especially for take two as well. So you know, if you look at um. If you look at E3's past and yeah. you look at the show floors for the map and you look at shows where there are no uh, 2K or Rockstar game announcements, Take Two would still usually have a very big booth space and yeah. they just use it to hold private meetings and things like that. But, um, you know, and, and that is, you know, it's, it's it's an expensive show to be at E3. So I'm, I'm confused that they still wouldn't do something at Gamescom. Uh, but I, I, this is this is post pandemic, right? Um, so I, I guess a lot of priorities and the way companies function now has changed quite a bit. So yeah, and again, I think we're constantly going to be looking at the sort of the state of things and comparing them to the, the years prior. And it's so difficult for us at the moment because we're trying to compare it to the ever changing world of games in general. But now we've got the the pandemic aspects to factor in, so it's always difficult to gauge: is it this or is it simply down to 
that, you know, like and yeah. that, because of the pandemic, that's caused delays and knock. So yeah, oh man, like interesting. I mean, Gamescom, they say you know, just so so people at home, like just as a sort of the the flip side of this, Gamescom say that that two hundred and fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just googling it, and two two hundred and fifty uh, <laughs> companies are attending. Uh, so. Let's see. We know that they're not one of them, but I wonder if PlayStation or Blizzard or Nintendo will have any sort of digital presence through Jeff Keighley's Gamescom Open and Night Live. Does that Maybe. count as Gamescom? Well, we'll find out, yeah. won't we? So, You're going to be at Gamescom, though. I, I am. Yeah, exactly. So you can come and see me. I uh, I have... And me. Well, I, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Aaron said we've got as many games to show as PlayStation. Uh, personally, like, you know, we, we, we've... The, you know, so, uh, um, yeah. Come and say hello. We'll, we'll talk more about that as we get closer to the date for the for the folks at home. Now, um, it's uh, there's one bit of news left, and I think it's a really nice thing. I think I think there'll be people at home who will have uh, been missing your say on uh, the events of last week. Certainly me. So I'd like to. I'd like you know. Yeah, I, I I I felt that I missed out, and I needed some E3 non E3 talk, and I, and I wanted to just have a conversation between us of like what what was your what what was your moment like what has been your game what what has has stood out to you mm. um personally what, what 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 was your jam it's been weird because like i had like um you know i had like an immediate thing that i was like looking forward to and then there was like surprises and stuff like that so i think for me like the, 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 the this answer is not straightforward uh, <laughs> the game that i was most excited to see was very very weird and it was there was an update to this game that i happened to have been playing the last two weeks called core keeper yes I, I, right yeah, cool game. yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. really wicked like really really wicked game and for those that don't know what it is it's a bit like kind of imagine like a top-down terraria or i can get a little bit more uh i, I think of it like stardew valley meets minecraft you know yeah. And, and and I I love it. I absolutely love it. Funnily enough, just before That's me and I, sold out, sold out game. Like it's fire, fire, shine. fire, shine, fire, shine, fire, shine. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, fantastic little game. And they yeah. happened to have an update the following week, and they were like, "We're going to show it at E3." So I was just like really excited that because I could look at something I already like, get excited for it, and then the thing that I'm seeing and getting excited for would be available to me within for four days so that that's was really cool so you see what i'm saying so yeah. that in it in a way was good um there was another game that really looked good but uh it has the name has kind of eluded me because what, what there was, was there was quite a few of them that looked a bit similar uh and that's probably sounds a little bit um What's it called? Uh, you know, sounds derogatory to say to so, you know, oh, it looks the same. Was it was it in any sort of presentation? Or? Yeah, it, well, there was there was <clears throat> Flintlock that looked pretty Flintlock? good. Flintlock. Did you did yeah. you see did you see that? I I, like I, the I, I saw that the the, the little uh, wolf fox god. Yeah, there, there was. Yeah, I know yeah, yeah, there yeah. was. Oh, it was like Nightingale. Uh, did you see this? It's uh yeah it was yes. It, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Night Nightingale, that's the name of the game. Sorry. And the thing what confused me is someone had a flintlock pistol in the picture. So it, <laughs> it, it so Nightingale looks like kind of like a hunt showdown type game. The thing is, yeah, like at the moment, I don't know what the hell's going on with my brain, but I hate all these like Rust, Ark, Raft, you know, all these early access survival craft and open world, only fun if you play with your friends, because the game is quite bare bones when you play by yourself, make your own fun type games. Yeah, and yet lately I've just had a real, real hunger for them. So I just want about Core Keeper. That element as crafting, the yeah. survival, and uh, Ark became free to to uh, you know download on your Steam library over the weekend, and you get to keep it. So this Nightingale oh, okay. is a nice mix of this like PVE early access stuff, mm. and the graphics are just enough for me. It looked a little bit like. Amazon's New World, that like Frontiersman, yeah. that is that era. It's PVE crafted, but with these cool looking creatures that look like they don't look like fantastical. They're not like you know, they look just realistic enough to imagine that they could have existed. But so, so I really like the look of that Nightingale um, because honestly, I think these types of games are the ones that over over the years when I'm playing with my friends now, they're the ones I remember because they're so anecdotal. Like you know, something happened to us in. 
scorekeeper that was funny, but you had to be there. And uh, Valheim's another game where it's only like only you are experiencing like the certain things, like a troll comes yeah. and smashes your rack. <clears throat> so for me, like that was a little nice surprise. And then I, I got to see a bit more of Hollow Knight Silk Song, which I really ah, liked. Um, yes. So that was one. And then the one. What a surprise as part of the Xbox thing, eh? Yeah, right. I was cool. almost a dead cert. It's was was like, yeah, I get to see more of it. I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, I, you know, no release date or anything, but it was good to see yeah. more. And, and the game that I wanted to see there a lot more, it wasn't a surprise because they announced it was going to be there, um, was the Callisto Protocol, which is the. The Dead Space creators yeah. don't call it a Dead Space game. It was one of the many, many space games. Uh, and you got to see a full, fat, very visceral look at the game. And it's out in December, which you can't ask for more. Sh sh let me see the game. Let me see it, how it plays. Let me see the, the tone. Tell me when it is. Oh, it's not that far. So, yeah, pr it was uh, Callisto Protocol, uh, this Core Keeper update, and uh, Nightingale. What about you, man? What what was it for you? There's probably a few too, right? So, I'm... I'm uh, I am... Genuinely, actually excited for Callisto Protocol. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I love Dead Space uh, back in the day. And I know that, you know, the, the Dead Space remakes come in and stuff, which is which is cool. But this is this is new and fresh and something new in terms of story. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's it's a whole new experience. Um, and Glenn Schofield, Glenn Schofield is a cool guy. Um, <clears throat> but... Um, I think uh, watching that, I thought that one, the video could have done with uh, a voiceover to explain what was going on. Um, yeah. And two, I think the video could have been cut better. Um, I, I don't think the game looked so optimized as it could be and mm -hmm. i know it's early and it's not until december and yeah. you know I, I still think it's got a lot of promise and i know that those things are going to be tweaked changed ironed out and massaged out and whatnot yeah um but i don't think it did any favors to the game um no, you're, you're, the, you're dead right you are you are the, right yeah <clears throat> the, the one thing that i did like that looked absolutely fantastic was when the uh the, the the character got sucked into the blender at the end. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I was yeah. like, wow, that looks so good. Yeah. You know, and the camera goes in and everything. You're like, yeah, yeah, this is more of that. Um <laughs> like, I was like, that 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 bit ran great. Um but I think I think for me the, the biggest surprise um has probably been uh Final Fantasy Rebirth, Square mm -hmm. Enix's presentation the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it certainly was. I didn't know whether I was including that in E3, but you're dead right. Yeah, so that, or oh, how do you feel about this? Because I've got very, like, oh, a lot of emotions, man. So, so, I I have conflicting thoughts and feelings over Final Fantasy VII Remake. Like, I I thought it started out great, it looks good, the combat was fun, um, and then, you know, the ending, the, the you know, the final you know three hours of the game is 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 quite entertaining and you know mm, uh, they yeah. just flip the script on its head by the end of the game right <laughs> in terms of mm -hmm. you know they're like yeah this is going to be fun a fun onward journey for everyone no matter how much you have devoured the original final yeah. fantasy 7 which is cool however i found the actual core of the game the actual Mm. backbone of the you know the, the middle section of the game to be quite boring and repetitive and slow um okay but because of the power of the ending i was like whoa what a game yeah um <clears throat> but uh so and don't get me wrong you know you, you have to remember that square enix you know final fantasy 7 remake was being made by 18 um, and then similar to the Metroid situation, Square Enix came and said, yeah, it's not up to our standards, so we're going to take this and continue and finish development. And I, I, I'd imagine they hodgepodge what was there and fitted some things in to make the game work as quick as they can because they don't have another five years to, to make a game from scratch. What I like about this one, uh, Rebirth, the new one, is um, they have... They have... Dove in with the trailer of what I mentioned about the ending of yeah. Remake. <clears throat> and it's like, 
ask yourself all these questions. But what I do like about uh, the game is from the few scenes that we have seen, it appears that they are opening up the world so it doesn't feel like you are just in corridors all the time because i think that was the biggest thing that you're in midgar and basically yeah. anywhere you want to go is down a corridor oh, i'll squeeze through this gap to hide the loading time and carry on yeah um i like that it looks a bit more open um i have no idea how they're going to continue progression from those who played remake you know, do, do you carry over your levels and your material and all that stuff? Or do they find a way to say, nah, 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 this starts from scratch again. Um, and then obviously as part of that, they said, hey, this is going to be a three game trilogy. Um, and there's, got, there's, there's a third game uh, that will be that will be coming that is unnamed. And then how do they do that again? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm curious functionally well, <clears throat> how it works. But I, I, I was quite impressed by, you know, their presentation. It was like short. It was like 15 minutes, I guess. Yeah. And we're like, here's a cool mobile game. If you play mobile games, here is a remake uh, of Crisis Core. If you didn't play this on, on the PSP, I think it was. Now's your chance and you can play it on its glory and find out this cool part of the story. And then here is a look at, you know, what you all want to play next year, Final Fantasy uh, Remake Part 2. I, I enjoyed uh, it. I, I am like... You know, when it ended, Final Fantasy VII, I was like, yes, do that, do that. Then when I saw this, I was like, not like that, go back. <laughs> and because, because um, and, and to put it completely bluntly, what the, the changes that they're making or whatever, fine. However, it's a remake of Final Fantasy. So what I want to see is the places, the characters and all that. So Midgar, the first game of the three games they're making, takes place in essentially the prologue. So if you yeah. cut out all of the like rubbish towns that no one cares about there's 13 main towns in the whole of final fantasy 7 a huge overworld map loads of set pieces <laughs> how are they putting all of the others in those two games well i can tell you right now they can't there's no it's way it's not gonna happen no. so i'm so sad that now what this is is it's a reinterpretation isn't it and, and I, i'm upset because i really wanted to experience junyun wutai fort condor calm all of that the golden saucer like yeah. oh and it's full oh and i know what you're all gonna say jake play final fantasy 14 i already am stop it but <laughs> i was really 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 wanting all of the locations for, for cosmo canyon the caves yeah. underneath cosmo canyon all of that the deep oh like i've been dreaming about that day and now i know i'm not getting it because there's no way on planet earth right i actually did all the math in my head before we came on Thinking if it takes Midgar, if, if Midgar's five hours, but in the game it's 30 hours, and then your time's all that, it means that they're going to need 150 hours of story content over the two games. No one's making 75 hours story content uh, these days. Nobody. Story, main story content, 75 hours at a disc. No one's doing it, apart from what Red Dead Redemption 2, which took about 50 years. So, look, like, <laughs> that's my opinion on it. Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy for it to be a cover version, but I'm sad that. Ultimately, I don't want to say they're cutting corners, but I'm just saying that the bold decisions that they've made are too bold for my taste. That's the best way of saying it, isn't it? Yeah. That's how I really feel. Um, yeah, so there, there, there are some things that also, there are some places that you could visit that might not make sense given the state of the story currently. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I, I, I am intrigued, but I, I really do understand what you're saying as well. Because, you know, they have just gone... In the trailer, they're, they're like, oh, what is Sephiroth's endgame? And, you know, he's walking alongside Cloud. But in that scene, I actually think that you're playing as Sephiroth then. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Very good. But, um, you know, they, they put all these questions in your face and they say, what is fact and what is fiction? Um, and, and... Yeah. and I was, like, <laughs> thinking... I. What they're asking, I really wanted that to be non f withable. I really wanted that to be that's going to happen no matter what. And I kind of thought that the story was going to go do what you want to do, what try and do, try and beat that, but you can't. Yeah. And 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 so you know, it's my. I I think I think that is still going to happen. You know, 
I think everyone's like, oh yeah, Eris is safe now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I still think I still think they are gonna pull the rug right. of the unsuspecting people by still doing it anyway. I I, <laughs> I, I, I I really I really hope so. But look, so so I'm I'm glad that you know you've had some uh, strong feelings about it, and and you watched a lot of trailers, and that was the one that stood out and uh, shows the power of that game specifically. Like honestly, so there was loads on. Honestly, you know, uh, we'll have to you know over time over the next. This is a beautiful thing about this year's E3. Quite a lot of the offerings are out over the next few weeks. So, you know, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll talk about the Overwatch beta and how that that is just a few um, in just a few weeks. So uh, before we hand you over to John Robertson, let's just take a moment to prepare ourselves because whew, this is a doozy. You're awake to find yourself in a dark room. Just before, So for anybody listening, we are in a dark room. And for the uh, video viewers, I'm sorry, I've lied. Okay, uh, this is the interview section with the legend, John Robertson. Darrens, if you do not like, subscribe, and leave a note and a nice review for this podcast, I shall be forced to shove a flamboyant potato where the sun don't shine. John's going to kill me for these, honestly. Word. Unplugged. Well, here we are in the interview segment, and uh, I'm joined by John Robinson in, well, look, I'm sure everyone's said this to you before. <laughs> look, we're in a room that's quite well lit, to be honest, but... Yes! Yes! <laughs> you know, you're, have... you're, you're in my domain now, the domain of oh, the no! light. Yeah, exactly. Oh, God, no, I can't. Look, I'm a bloody gamer. <laughs> I don't exist in light or sunshine. I shouldn't be seen. <laughs> I should be a series of words that appear on a screen. GG, noob. Well, listen, John, it's really good to have you on the podcast. Like, uh, you're, you know what? When I say a bit of a cult hit, I mean that in a sort of sacrificial way as well as like following way. Um, but in a it, sacrificial way, that's the most frightening thing anyone's ever said. I've been, I, well, listen, I'll tell you what, I've been kind of immersing myself in Dark Room all day today. So okay. there's a lot of esoteric uh subconscious thoughts that are just running through my brain basically i've been really oh, good doing my best you know well well after you've committed the massacre please don't mention me in your manifesto <laughs> yeah, right. well so for those that don't know who you are john uh in your own words um who are you and, and what is it that you do on the internet uh, i am uh i'm john robertson i Stream at twitch.tv slash Robotron. I created a show called The Dark Room, which is the world's only live action video game, which is really just um, an intensely sadistic interactive game show that I play touring around. I'm, I'm somebody who came up with a really silly idea uh, 10 years ago, and God bless people's tolerance for me and that crap idea. Honestly, like I've got to say, the, the idea has done very, very well over you know a long period of time, but so is League of Legends, mate. So don't worry about it. I don't have their money, but thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's me and League of Legends, pal. Yeah, Dude, it's so, good. <laughs> setting you up here, aren't I, really, to be honest? No, no, no that, that's awesome. I'm just looking around this flat like, yeah, I'm fairly certain this rent is killing me. But yeah, no worries. No worries. <laughs> well, listen, man, it's, uh, it, it's a pleasure because um, if, if the accent doesn't give it away... Uh, you're not originally from the UK, but I feel like you 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 could probably apply for lordship here at least or something. <laughs> Everybody in the UK games industry um, knows or knows of you and uh, the dark room. To be completely oh. honest, it's like it becomes a bit of a it's a bit of a staple of like gaming conventions and things like that. If you're for those internationally listening, if you're at like the equivalent of like PAX over here in the UK, like EGX or Insomnia or stuff like that. There's, there's always a some, something. There's always something. I, I described you a little bit earlier off, off this podcast as a bit of like a, you know, spectral figure kind of skulking about, you know, uh, and just like getting people all ready to, to rock with the dark room. And I think that that's pretty on brand, man, because like the dark room is kind of cool, but it is kind of dark. Like it's. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it, I mean, it's a, it's a brutal, heavy metal, you know, real kick in the teeth kind of game show. It's. um. Yeah, I, look, I, I'm just incredibly pleased that you've said that because, like, in my mind, I'm like, yeah, a lot of people have been called a fuckhead by me while I'm on stage. That's sort of what I do, you know. <laughs> like, I'm, you yeah. know, like, I, I, like, for anyone who who doesn't know any any of this, like, what he's talking about is the show is me, but instead of being an Australian man, 
I am this colossal British psychopath wearing weird cyberpunk armor. And there are options that get, uh, you know, projected on the screen. People call out what they want. Like it's an old text adventure. Mm. But now we've sort of like, we've consumed all of gaming. So we're doing parodies of Elden Ring and D&D stuff. And it just boils down to people telling me stuff they like and me telling them that they're wrong and then throwing terrible yeah. prizes at them. And yeah. people have just treated me really well. Like quite kind of like you would a psychopath who shows up and refuses to leave. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, look, honestly, I mean, it, it's the point where you've got this, the, the ad lib chops here that it, it constantly shifts and changes. Like you say, Elden Ring and like uh, really topical things can, can come up, you know? Oh, um, and any, any time. I mean, like the thing that I'm, I'm doing at the mm. moment is just we've got this really long riff on DLC. And my favorite bit of improv at the moment is um, what we call premium stupid hat mode. Yeah. Right, which is great. We just go, right, you want premium? And, you know, people get very excited. And what you do is just go, right, who's got a hat? And somebody will bring you a hat. And then you go, who's got money? And you get like 20 quid. And then you just keep the money and put the hat on and go, premium stupid hat mode. And then you can watch the guy at the end of the show going, do I get the money back? It's like, no, I'm EA. I'm keeping it. This is, this what do you mean you feel ripped off? This is why I said it's you and League of Legends earlier, remember? Yeah, well, it's right up there. Basically. Yeah. You know, Johnny Microtransaction Robertson, they call me. <laughs> no. Exploiting the kids. But, Woo! <laughs> now, you know, the thing for me is I, um, I've been playing video games my whole life. I actually, you know, really started on like the sepia sort of Game Boy, you know, and then snares and, and whatnot. So I kind of missed like the text adventure stuff. Uh, yeah. So for me, it reminded me of like those choose your own adventure, premium rate telephone line games that you used to, you know, like on the TV. So oh, wow. do, do you know, I don't know if you've ever seen that, but like. No, no, no. I've only ever seen Limmy parodying it. Well, I was about to ask. I was, I yeah. was about to ask. Have you seen. This oh, is yeah, just yeah. Have you seen Adventure Call and crucially Falcon Hoof? Would, yep. Do you reckon Falcon Hoof would survive the dark room? No, fuck no. Falcon Hoof <laughs> couldn't survive Limmy's show. No, <laughs> he, no, right. No, no, like I, because like I, I stream on Twitch and Limmy raids occasionally and we could usually tell right around the time he showed up because suddenly, like if I'm doing dark room or something, suddenly the chat just fills up with several thousand people writing, kill, kill Jester. Jester. Yeah, kill, kill Jester. Jester. Yeah. And it's bloody awesome. He was the first comedian I saw upon getting over here. <laughs> couldn't believe it. Like we're up in Glasgow. And this bloke just goes, oh, get a load of this. You'll have never seen anything like it. I was like, this is fucking fantastic. Well, actually, yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that there's a bit of a acknowledgement there because, yeah, you're, you're so both come from a, essentially a stand up background, but have both mm. found a, a comfortable home on Twitch, which is, a, oh, yeah, you know, I can through like, you know, I guess Limmy's like Twitter threads and stuff like that and, and timeline, which is just sort of. Good luck to everybody just getting into that. <laughs> there are, I can see that he does retweet o other comedians that are on Twitch, and it, it really is kind of a thing. So I, I was wondering, like, uh, you know, if you can remember a time when you discovered Twitch. Can you remember, like, where it was or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, I know exactly where I was when I discovered Twitch. And it, this is going to get a little, uh, you know, dark uh, for a mm -hmm. second. What had happened was um, I'd come back. I, I'd gone to Western Australia uh, for my best friend's funeral yeah. and I'd come back. Right. And I wasn't, it wasn't in a terrific state. And um, <clears throat> I, I worked for Jinx TV at the time. I was doing yeah. a show called video game nation and they had a Twitch account and we were talking about the dark room and they went, Oh, you should really do that on Twitch. Like, and yeah. we were figuring out how to, how to rig it up. And then Twitch got a hold of it and they went, gee, that sounds good. We'll give you um, like UK and Europe front page. Right. And they gave it. So the very first time I was ever on Twitch wow. ever was talking to like 4,000 people every second and yeah. just riffing away. And we did that show and I dedicated it to, um, to her. Mm -hmm. And, and that was interesting too, because like you think about, cause I bloody love Twitch. I love everything you can do with it. And I love, you know, I love getting, you know, into the hard and fast of it and dealing with American teenagers. Yeah. So once they've said crackhead, they don't actually have anything left. They've got right. nothing yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, an, yeah. And they're always astonished. Like, yeah. no, they, the streamer spoke to me. How did that happen? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah. you, you can't say that about my mum. Like, I've, I've watched simple your mum jokes just completely, you know, befuddle kids from LA who's like, yeah. what is this? But 
Well, also, any any anytime you see me on Twitch front page, if I seem like I'm doing some brutal stuff, I'm doing a charity show. So my bad behavior is temporarily justified. Yeah, right? said, for good yeah. cause. Bad behavior well, that, for a good cause. Yeah. Well, that's that's something I've literally said. It's like, you're heckling a charity show, you stupid fuckwit. I'm going to kick you in the throat. <laughs> and then, of course, you have to go, um, yeah. of course, Twitch's terms of service mean that you can't uh, make plausible yeah. threats. I'll never be able to find your throat. I don't know yeah. where you live. I'm a very short man, little legs. In anyway, a video I, game, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'll keep, yeah, in a beautifully rendered video game. Oh, I don't play video games with good enough graphics for next to be visible. I'm an N64 man. Anyway, um, yeah, so the very first time we were on Twitch, it was doing that. Yeah. And what what really got me, and it was really nice, is every time that I started a new hour, because we did it for four hours, yeah. and I would explain why we were there, and I would explain why I was doing it, this wall of chat would appear where people genuinely were upset for my friend and that yeah. was really beautiful like and seriously like no bullshit nobody was a prick in those moments right yeah it like they all they all took it as good and it was when i was actually playing that i still remember the classic moment where a guy just wrote in all caps reported for non-gaming content and i was like that is the saddest man having an aneurysm it was beautiful yeah. <laughs> honestly like you know i i, I was really curious to to see you know how you thought about that. And I guess we've kind of got a bit of an insight into it there because, you know, Twitch compared to like Torin, for example, must be hmm. so different because essentially it's not always the same and, and it's a cumulative, but you, you almost have the same live audience night after night. Whereas if, if you did a show, let's say in Manchester and then you went to London and it was the complete same people with, you know, 20 extra, you'd, it'd probably be a, a lot, a lot different. So, there's also a lot more opportunity for back and forth. Like you just mm. mentioned then there was a lot of people speaking in solidarity at the time on Twitch was imagine that in a live show, people just going, yes, yes, I agree. Yes. Or oh, they oh, do that. You know? Yeah. Like, well, that's, that's when you get that great feeling that you're hosting a rally. And usually when my shows end up like that, I'm like, it's gone well. If you know, that's a great feeling. You're like, now, folks, now we storm the Bastille. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah very, I'm yeah. more likely to storm Baskin Robbins, but nevertheless, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. yeah. So, um, is is yeah. it how like how have you noticed what's it like to sort of you know be on Twitch and and see the same faces like time and time again and like have a parasocial relationship in a way? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's it's an interesting thing because like when we do big shows on Twitch, mm -hmm. that's got a real feel of we're doing a spectacle. You know, yeah, and that's where, yeah, you know, it it's it's funny because it's like imagine imagine having a heckler who you can just get rid of with you don't even have to press the button, someone else does it for you. Yeah, it's wonderful. You've, the seat. Seat. You've, you've already hurt their feelings and then they're gone. And then about ten <laughs> minutes later, somebody comes back with a curiously similar username, and you never yeah. it never really gets you down because you're like, my God, the sadness of this. This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know, kind of like, like the equivalent of the heckler being kicked out and then coming back in with a fake mustache. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> yeah. exactly what it is. I like, ah, oh, it's me, Mr. Snrub, you know, like all <laughs> yeah. that. So that's that's always very, very funny. Um, thing thing with um like seeing the same people over and over again, which is a wonderful thing. We got a big, you know, big little well, big community and yeah, you know, bunches of folks come in. You build up a relationship with what they write and what they do. Like I've got people in my chat who have committed to a gimmick and they've committed to that gimmick for two and a half years. Yeah. So, you know, we've got somebody who I at one point said their name sounded like a robot. So all they write in the chat is beep, boop, beep, yeah. boop, <laughs> over right. and over again. And then you've got other people who you're like, okay, you know, th this guy's not having too crash hot a day. Now I can't go into that too heavily because I've still got to do a show. And we've all got to have some fun, but you can wish that person well. And that's nice. You know, because like you don't get to do that in a 20 minute stand up set. You never got, you know, like you're doing this. This town's shit. This place is awful. Sorry to hear it's gone badly for you. I hope things turn out okay. But, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> but on Twitch, you can. And it, it's really good fun. You know, I can imagine it's well, it's quite empowering for the audience because Dark mm. Room, um, you know, is very crowd participation driven, right? Yeah. And there are a lot of people there who are probably in the audience kind of like, don't pick me. I'm here mm. and I love it, but don't pick me. But if it was just simply via, you know, text chat, it can probably, you know, bring people out of their shell a bit and they can enjoy it a little bit more. Is that right, Twishu? Well, well, it's true. I mean, the thing is, like, when people do come to see it live, that that joy of, oh, don't pick me, 
I don't pick people that don't want to be picked. Ten years of, you know, that that moment of going, all right, that person's having an anxiety attack. Yeah. That guy's just hit me. You know, like these are all signs. Ah, oh, maybe don't give those people a go. <laughs> that cat that's hissing and spitting doesn't want to be patted, so don't pat the bloody cat, right? Yeah, fantastic. Whereas with Twitch, yeah, everyone can have a go. It brings everybody out. So when we do the shows live, yeah, you might get some people who, you know, like I do have people who say to me, oh, yeah, I love your show. I sat at the back, didn't want to get picked, but they're really verbal on there. And 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 as well, like, I mean, I don't want to get to like, <clears throat> you know, because I sound I sound in this interview that I'm like, yeah, that I put people down, kick you in the throat, butter, butter, but but I am a bella because I like um, you know, playing with people and engaging with people. Yeah. It it is about empowering them. And one of the really nice things about streaming on Twitch and doing my live shows and sometimes broadcasting the theater shows on Twitch is you get disabled people who could never see me live. You know, they'd ne never be able to get there. People in different countries, all this, yeah. and they're able to play and participate. And that lends that that ends up being beautiful. You know, even even if that person on some level is a bit of a dick to you in the chat, yeah. at least they're getting the opportunity to do that. Yeah, you know, that's part of the human experience. It's great. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, in fact, a couple of episodes ago, uh, we spoke to Safe in Our World. Um, oh yeah, yeah, we love uh, those guys. Yeah, uh, and we discussed the sort of importance of video games in helping people with all sorts of, you know, disability and, and disorder uh, find escapism the same as people who aren't afflicted. And just a couple of weeks ago, we spoke to Special Effect, which is a yep. lot more, you know, physical ailments there. And uh, video games and escapism go hand in hand. So I, I hear what you're saying exactly. To, well, to talk about video games and, um, you know, the 80s text-based adventures, I was, I was really curious. I've been asking everybody on this uh, you know, quite a few of the people we've interviewed work very closely in the video games industry. Developers, coders, you know, really in there. And then there's others who are working for like gaming adjacent charities like Safe Now World or whatever. But one thing I've been trying to ask everybody is, um, well, can you remember the very first video game that really resonated with you? Maybe not the one that you saw, you might have walked past like Pac-Man or something and didn't care. But like in the first one that you were like, holy shit. Yeah. Well, look, I never, um, I'm very easily impressed, like yeah. very easily impressed, especially as a kid. Like I bought marketing a hundred percent. Those mm. shoes make you the fastest. Oh, those shoes had to be the best shoes that had ever existed. Yeah. And, and the first thing that really spoke to me just because it was happening in front of me and it was, you know, it was right there. Uh, and this is terrible because I've played it subsequently and it's a terrible game was altered beast. Yeah, Altered Beast. Yeah. Altered Beast has such like it's iconic even now. Yeah, wise from your grave. Yeah, I, this is what I mean. Like, I, I in my head, I have fond memories of the game when I probably yeah. don't. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Like, like yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, like that was the first one that I actually got to get my hands on. Right, it turns out like my parents have been taking me to video games arca uh, video game arcades when I was a kid, but they never put any money in. Right. And because they knew I didn't know how to read. So it didn't matter about the insert coin flashing. They're like, oh, good on you. You're doing it. You're doing it. Right. I was very easily misled. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I remember Altered Beast was the first time I was like, wow, I'm this, you know, like kind of, you know, getting all muscly. And then suddenly you're a wolf and you're like, well, that's very cool. Yeah. And then after that, like the one that sticks indelibly in my memory, because like I liked Sonic the Hedgehog and I wanted to be, you know, friends with all of his little mates and stuff like that. But yeah. with Street Fighter. Because you would walk into the arcade and you could hear Street Fighter wherever it was, you know, like the Dalzim's elephants, you know, all of this Hadouken, Hadouken, Tiger, Tiger. Yeah, Incredible. yeah. Incredible. And, you know, like every kid at my school, even though none of them knew how to play, none of them could throw a Hadouken with any value, they could all say <laughs> Yoga Fire and Yoga Flame. Yeah. You know, this yeah. was the stuff. Yeah, honestly, you know, I, I sometimes make jokes to my kids about like, you know, the tiger knee or whatever, and they yeah. just they don't get it. And I'm like, yeah, I know you like, yeah, it's still in my head, like the dalsim oh. chop and stuff. That's like, yeah, that to me is very iconic. Like, that's a really so actually both very uh, testosterone heavy games. There, there's a lot of shredded dudes. Oh in yeah, both hell yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the first things that I ever really liked as a kid were all like my mum was was watching this, and she was just sort of like. Oh, here comes the violence again. You know, like just, oh, yes. Oh, for God's sake, he's watching the wrestling again. Yes, John, the Ninja Turtles have beaten up somebody. Else. That was the fun bit. It yeah. was so enjoyable, you know. And then I'd go to school and discover that I wasn't the Ninja Turtles or the yeah. Altered Beast. Yeah, yeah, that, the hard way. Now, you know, I am yep. um, 
video games have, have changed a lot since then. Uh, I was mm. curious to ask before we talk about some of your other pursuits, including the book and, and such, like, can you remember the last game that you played that you were really like, sometimes you catch yourself loving a video game, like going, mm. oh, oh my God, this is like mind blowing. Can you remember what the last one was? Yeah, oh, that I, that's completely mind blowing. And this, uh, this was mind blowing. Not because, uh, you know, not because it was in any way explosive mm. or, or like really super, super charged or technically innovative or anything. This was just me realizing my age, right? I had downloaded Civilization Five and I got all yeah. of it yeah. and I put it on and the music came on and on came the mm. opening. Mm. And I realized that I had just discovered what was going to be my version of meditation because I'm not a, I'm not a wind down guy. Like mm. I'm a, I'm a high wired, you know, constantly caffeinated, always awake, million miles a second kind of a man. And so me essentially running what is a nuclear war is really restful. <laughs> Very good. Civilization hey. five. Yeah. Civilization that... five. I'm just like, I'm currently at war with Catherine the Great. And aside from that, I'm like, lovely music, beautiful colors. This is restful. Absolutely. Send- Funnily enough, I know exactly what you're on about. My brother is yep. absolute same with like Total War. He'll just mm. play that on a Sunday, and to him, he might that's like gardening for him. Yeah. Apart from it's just you know sieges every yeah, month. Yeah, it's, it's a Zen garden full of landmines. That's what it is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. That that's a, that's a really good pick to be honest, and a, a complete somehow the complete opposite of Vaulted Beast. So that's a nice yep. little now. Well, you want to you want to think you've learned something in thirty years, don't you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you imagine if you said the last Street Fighter, that would have been different. Um, well, that said, I mean, you know, like the 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 last game I physically played, I did just play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge. So things haven't changed that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, well, they're all coming back, and that game is oh, doing yeah. really well, huh? So. Oh, look. Well, when I when you're sitting there playing it with a mate of yours. And suddenly the screen starts scrolling down as they walk past an alley. And you're like, yeah, they first did that in Streets of Rage too. Let me tell you something. <laughs> like, All right, John. Okay. Yeah. Not every thought has to leave the head, buddy. <laughs> Honestly, like, uh, it's it's been nice to see the, the gaming community take on Dark Room because of its video game elements. But mm. realistically, um, you know, the, the impro, I think, is what, is the core i don't i don't know if the dark room could work if you weren't so sharp witted and stuff like that and that comes from well probably you were just born with it to be honest mate you know i'm diagnosing you here but i'm saying that like stand-up certainly helped i think sharpen the tools right um now i believe don't know if this is right or not so you know feel free to smite me but an anime convention in australia yes. was the yes. first like prototype for the dark room, I believe. Would you mind telling me a little bit about how that came about and how it went? I'm happy to tell you. Uh, that was Wycon in Perth, Western Australia. And mm-hmm. uh, if, you, if you, like, upon hearing, like, the phrase, like, Western Australian anime convention in any way, mm-hmm. think, oh, that's small. You know, like, in any way, you're oh, like, yeah. oh, that won't even be a hotel. That'll be a couple of rooms at a uni or something. Yeah. Now, this was at the Perth Convention Centre, which has a 3,000-seat theatre. And that used to get full uh, for the cosplay competition. I used to host the cosplay. So when I went off to the Edinburgh Fringe uh, first couple of times, I come back and they went, oh, didn't you just do a show about video games at the Fringe? And I did. It's called Dragon Punch, right? It was just about Street Fighter mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. And they went, well, you know, like, come and do it. Do it on the Saturday night at the con. I was like, yeah, you beauty, you know. And mm-hmm. they gave us the 3,000-seat theater. And we got about 1,500 people, you know, like, in to watch this thing, you know. And what happened was they're a very unruly audience, the weaves. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like divorced yeah. from the body pillows. They're a bit set and ready, and people are yelling catchphrases from various animes and subs, not dubs, is going on, and it's all happening. You know, it's all a thing. <laughs> people are heckling me on Picto chat. That's how long ago this was. Right. <laughs> all all of that. And I was having a I was having a top time, but the show was getting a bit out of hand. And I thought, well, I've got this little five minute joke I've written about how crap old 80s video games used to be. And I start doing this routine about, you guys remember, don't you? When it was like this, you're weak to find yourself in a dark room. And what happens is, of course, you know, they've all been heckling and having fun. Well, they're gamers. So they start, they're they're like, is there a game on? They all start playing. They start (laughs) playing a game that doesn't exist. So people are going, I escape. And I'm explaining why they don't. Goes back and forth. I got all the lights turned off. And that bit of, that bit went for 45 minutes like show the show running time was doubled by doing that 
And I went home and a mate of mine was like, well, that worked. I was like, yeah, yeah, it was unexpected, right? And when I got home, I checked my uh, inbox and people were doing fan art of it. And I was like, oh, fuck, well, that's good. You can tell something's working, right? Because, mm. you know, like we'd had some really great shows, but no one was just going, fuck, here's some drawings, you know? So <laughs> yeah. then I made um, a little YouTube adventure, you know, you can click mm. it all together. And that um, that went 2012 levels of viral. So that was, um, yeah. I got interviewed by Variety Magazine and stuff. It was cool. Mm. Yeah, it was really fun. And then um, another mate of mine went, that Edinburgh Fringe you keep going to, you could probably do that as a show. We'll just uh, code that for you. And I got a room uh, at a place called The Hive, which is like um, mm -hmm. one of Edinburgh's spongiest, flawed, sweatiest, <laughs> you know, like I, I remember I went dancing there one night. I tripped over something and it was someone's fucking can of Axe body spray, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I, I love the hive, but don't touch the floor. You'll get bloody lupus and that lupus will be pregnant. It's a horrific <laughs> joint. And yeah, we did it there. And like my wife was said the other day, she's like, you remember the first time we did dark room and there were like four blokes there? And I went, yeah. Yeah, and she was like, yeah, and it went for 20 minutes. So yeah. And then she was just like, yeah, remember how the next day it was full? I was like, yeah, I remember. Because it, it like literally we did the show for these four blokes. They went away. It, it had taken 20 minutes because I didn't really know what to do. So I just went, oh, they'll each have a go, right? And then literally I turned to my wife and I'd been doing stand-up about, oh, what, nine years by that point. Right. So I turned to her and I just went, oh, that's got legs. Because it did. It just immediately, like, was working. And then, yeah, it was just crazy. And then off the back of that, you get 10 years of a career. I, I Re yeah. love that. I was, I was actually going to ask, you know, can you remember the first official one? And, yeah. and how did that go with well, the foot the four bloke thing is it would yeah it would have been probably all like something like august 1st uh 2012 wow. uh and it was um yeah really really great and just like we gave the you know we'd had these little badges mate we gave them each a badge and then yeah. you know ran out of badges the second day you know because everyone you know it was great it's, it's really it, good you know like you mentioned this is <clears throat> taken on you know, an insane amount. Of, it's still got momentum. You know, you. Oh yeah. You, 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 do, you did a show this week, right? You, oh yeah. I mean, I just did a show. Well, I did a show yesterday. I've got two more this week. Um, the stream, the streaming goes on top of all of that. Um, yeah, and then we we're gearing up as the month goes on. I'm in Manchester, and I'm in. Um, in fact, I can't remember the other joint, but I'm in I'm in Manchester. Then we got Edinburgh Fringe, and then bit of fun flying back to Perth, Western Australia, because that anime convention has been replaced by another anime convention, and they're having the show in the venue. So there we go. This is was... the circle of life. We did yeah, it. Yeah, it's the circle oh. of life, except except for the part where I was banned from the venue last time I was there for crowd surfing, and oh. I intend to get banned a second time. <laughs> oh, John's revenge. Listen. Oh, the... yeah. It's, yeah. It's Bring nice... me some stronger people to catch me this time. I killed three small girls last time. It's a real bummer in the footage. <laughs> That's the thing, all these weebs, man. So, listen, this is a sort of, you know, resurgence of live shows. How has it been getting back into the swing of things? Or because of Twitch, did it feel like you kind of never left? Because, obviously, we've had a pandemic on, you know. Yeah. Oh, mate, I, I never left. Like, I never left. I was always I was always performing. Like, And I still, like, even though I cut back some of my Twitch hours, right, I still stream six days a week, you know. Like, so I was always on and I was always performing live and going back out was really super nice because a lot of people that you never seen before but yeah. they've been through the twitch are suddenly there and they're fun characters now you know and people who had been coming to the live shows and then supported me through twitch are now back you yeah. know and then you get new people on top of that and it's it's a magical feeling like if you like i was just in um oh shit lester i was just in lester yeah. the other day and you go out you start doing the show and just when i said one of the catchphrases of the show and 90% of the audience erupts with the noise and they all say it with you. And you're just looking at these three blokes. Uh, it was great. There was a guy who looked like an end, like an end of game boss with two goons. Yeah. And I was like, you're the only three blokes who haven't seen the show, aren't you? And they really were. They were the only people who didn't know what the fuck was going on. And they were delighted by it, but it was, it's good to watch that. Yeah. You, know, you watch a whole room of people pop. It's like going to the wrestling and you know, like there's one person going, who's, who's this guy? And everyone, ah, ah, you know, oh. I think in a slightly more subdued version of the wrestling, I watched for the very first time in my life just a few months ago, Rocky Horror Picture Show, right? Oh, yeah. Which is kind of, you know, there's so much participation that 
If you've never seen it before, I was like, there's, there's forks now, you know, yeah. but, but it doesn't take away from your enjoyment. It just gives you an extra level of like, what the fuck is going on? But oh, if, you yeah. know, that's kind of the point that when you're watching it, right, you know, so now exactly. it, it's been, it's really cool to see that it's, it's just as soon as the gates are open, you're out there doing this, doing it exactly how it is. But the dark room, like, is the only venture you've had. You, you've also, uh, well. Is it Penguin or is it Puffin? Like, they're the same thing, right? But Puffin yeah, is the subsidiary. The Puff, Puffin is the kids. Yeah, right. So Puffin is the uh, the young adult and the kids wing of Penguin. That's it. Good use of the word wing there, by the way. Fantastic. Yeah, nice. Yeah, slotted that one very, right that, in. Good very, on the branding. <laughs> very, Dude, very that media good. training's worked really well. That is great. So let's talk a little what bit about that. What, what, what's the little <laughs> town of Maraville? So the little town of Maraville reaches over, grabs copy that's actually just over there. Uh, oh, oh, wow, there is one. Oh, that is lucky. Uh, <laughs> There we go. Uh, the Little Town of Maraville is uh, my children's novel uh, that Puffin was good enough to publish back in 2019. It's the start of a series. Uh, we eagerly await the other instalments being commissioned. Um, but that is uh, the reviews that we've had in from Starburst magazine and uh, the South China Morning Post, which was a bit of a surprise. Um, they Well, I didn't know the book was available in Hong Kong, but it turned out it was. Right. And yeah. got a bloody rave. Um, people, yeah, people have been really nice. They like it gets comparisons to Roald Dahl and H.P. Lovecraft and Terry Pratchett, and these are three of my favourite things in the world. So yeah. Yeah. I'm delighted. And yeah, it's like I wanted to write a kids' book that um, was exactly the kids' book I wanted to read when I was a kid. And I, I always liked, I liked, um, I liked bad guys really getting theirs. You know, like, and I liked uh, sinister weirdos who weren't always bad. And I liked, um, uh, you know, extreme cartoon violence. And yeah, and so I wrote this book where uh, there's a 14-year-old girl called Aubrey's sister because her father won't give her a name, right? <laughs> and um, and her little brother, Aubrey, and they get involved. Um, they're pursued for their lives by a street gang because two, um, two cosmic pensioners appear out of nowhere grind their father into mince and then they eat him so uh you know for it, it's it's the best kids yeah. book to start with cannibalism it's bloody terrific <laughs> you know very good no yeah thank you yeah we've just um like people when they write the reviews for it the, like the best one i've seen is somebody who went warning contains mild cannibalism mild cannibalism is well, yeah fantastic isn't it oh it's a lovely it's a lovely thing it also like I wrote it because I was looking at it and, you know, I was like, oh, this is, I think this is funny. You know, I think it'd be all right. I gave it to the publishers. They, we had a meeting. Mm -hmm. We, it was a, it was a good meeting. They, they brought us in and the head of Puffin who, you know, has seen thousands of kids books said this was one of the nicest sentences I've ever heard. She went, John, we have, um, we have all read your book to our children. Uh, all of our children agree that the scene where the kids eat their father is the funniest scene. They like that very much. Please, John, please edit that scene so the children enjoy eating their father slightly less. We we just want to sell the book to the Americans, John. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is worth its weight in gold, isn't it? It's yeah. gorgeous, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, she, she, you know, the Germans are aboard, John. The Brits are aboard. <laughs> it's doing very well over. It's doing well in Hong Kong. But for God's sake, John... <sighs> Make the father taste bad or something. <laughs> Honestly, like it, it's it was a surprise to see this. I, I I didn't know about the book, and I looked and I was like, you know, I I have two daughters, and one of them is like of you know morbid, you know, but in a way that kids are, you know what I yeah. mean? There's that there's that there's that dark side to it, and and th there's a lot of that that is, is a very metal sensibility, right? And. Uh, I'm just like, yeah, I don't know where to start with that now. There's maybe a couple of shows on Netflix that have got like a darkness to them. So I was like, this is great. So I was going to ask, like, is there more? But you kind of already, you know. Well, yeah, the, the thing on. is the second book's already planned out. Like, I know I know what's coming. I know, I know some twists. I know, you know, some turns. I know the new big bad. I've created some characters that make me laugh, you know, and, yeah. and all of that. But the trick to that is we've just sold out the first printing of of Maraville, the sec it's going to the second print now and it's just we just keep ticking along more people buy it more word of mouth spreads and eventually those nice people at puff and go oh cool here you go do another one so yeah we hustle away baby that's how it works huh there we go you heard it here first well look john you know we've got a very decent insight um into pretty much all things dark room that 
you can disclose. Um, mm. So I'd like to give you the floor um, before we uh, send you back into the abyss and me and Aaron just f- found this podcast. But I was going to ask one question yeah. to end it on. Um, if you could describe the good ending in a sentence, what would it be? <laughs> <laughs> vicious that would be the not even a sentence that is literally that is literally it vicious is the answer really fucking oh great. yeah like on, on, honestly this is for the people that know i tried for those no that worries. don't don't worry about it john robertson thank you very oh, much for your time no, man i hope you have thank a, you. A, a really nice rest of your marathon of a tour um, and <laughs> can you just let the people know if they're interested where they can check you out? Oh, hundred percent. Um, yeah. If you want to come by, uh, you could see me 90% of the time live down your face hole at twitch.tv slash Robotron, R-O-B-B-O-T-R-O-N. Uh, I'm on, I'm on Twitter at Robotron and everything else you want to find is at www.thejohnrobertson.com, including all my tour dates and links to t-shirts and stuff and books and everything. John, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Wired Unplugged. Well, that was John Robinson. Um, You know, that was something. (laughs) My favorite thing about that is how I gravitated towards drinking water out of a wine glass just so I could feel a little bit more eloquent in the man's presence. Yeah. He's a very sharp witted individual. But look, I survived. Uh, <laughs> here I am, baby. So look, um, next week I'm away and a week after Aaron's away. So we're, we're going to leave you in some capable hands. We'll, we'll figure it all out as it comes together. But thank you very much for, for joining us. And I hope you enjoyed the interview. And uh, I'm glad that you came back to give us your thoughts on E3. Man. I was really curious. but I was like, if I talk to Aaron about it off the podcast, then I'll already know. But I wanted to keep it pure. So I'm glad that you shared that. And uh Great to have you back, man. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. If you want to take part in the mind-melting, quite literally, uh, Arcade Paradise reveal, 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 release date, release date, release date, shenanigans, it's at Wired P, P4 Paradise. Uh, Yeah. That's that's June 29th. Yes. Which is soon. Which is soon. By the time you listen, it's it's, it's very soon. One day after the Overwatch 2 beta starts. (laughs) There we go. Yeah, exactly. And let's see which is better received. Hmm. Anyway, goodbye. <laughs> Word unplugged.